So let, let's start from before Connections, what was your life like? What conditions brought you to the Connections program? Um, we moved into a home um, in a really bad neighborhood in a trailer park uh, right after we got married. Here in Eugene? In Roseburg. Oh. And uh, there was a lot of drugs there mm -hmm. and old um, acquaintances that probably weren't very good to live around. And so we um, got really deep in our addiction. In November I went to treatment and um, my kids left, left the home and went to stay with their other parents. I took my two boys to uh, their mother's house because I didn't want them to see <clears throat> all the crime and drugs and things that I was things going on they didn't need to see anymore. Yeah. Much crimes were happening again. Yeah. Well while, while Krista was in treatment, I got out of jail about nine days before she got out of treatment. And I have some friends that lived here in Eugene that were clean and sober. And Krista didn't want to come back to Roseburg and I didn't want to be there either. So I got a hold of one of my friends here that's been clean for three or four years and he suggested that we get Krista started in one of the Fresh Start houses, the recovery house here in town. Uh -huh. So that's what we did. We, and I was living in an Oxford house in Roseburg at that time, uh -huh. clean sober housing Right. with my kids. We got our taxes back and um, we moved into a motel on 6th Street for the week because we knew that we could apply for houses and get jobs and we'd be moved in somewhere, and that was our plan. And um, the moving in somewhere didn't work out. Yeah. The jobs did. I've been convicted of 33 felonies in the state of Oregon, and she had. A, I had an two eviction. evictions, and one of them I owed money on still. Oh yeah, so you just couldn't even qualify. No, absolutely not. Not even with co-signers. And we had um, been in connection with Family First, which is St. Vincent de Paul's. Um, family shelter, right. which is an amazing group of people um, that totally empowered us to help us to um, see what needed to get done and um, give us the means to do that. And yeah, they showed us exactly what steps we needed to take to get anywhere. Yeah. This was the third time I had been homeless because of my addiction. So before I met Ryan, I was homeless twice and lived in a shelter with my three children. So my girls, my teenage girls, pretty much grew up in homeless shelters. So Family First um, got us a parking permit. So we lived in an 18-foot travel trailer on 18th and Polk. Four of us in a little teeny 18-foot travel trailer. With a porta potty. With no power and no water. I prayed all the time that none of us got the flu because I couldn't imagine having to throw up in a porta potty. Is Both of us were with full time jobs. Oh, you did get jobs? Yeah. Yes. We got jobs the first week we were in the motel. Absolutely. And I was a manager at Arby's because that's what I've done my whole life is a restaurant and food, and I've always been a cook. Your job? Uh, at a plywood mill and. Uh, Jasper. Jasper. Stay there. That place was horrible. You didn't stay anyway, there. Anyway, it was though. just a job. So then after that, while I was working there, I went down to Forest Paint and applied Forest Technical Coatings. Yeah. And um, that's where I work now, still. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, that, that's an amazing place. Casey finally called us with the Connections program and said... It took us like three more months um, to get actually accepted into the Connections program because you have to have... Any evictions have to be paid less than like two hundred dollars. So we had to complete renters rehab. We had and we had to do renters rehab. So getting to go back to school has been an awesome experience. Mm -hmm. I'm going to school to be a CADC one, which is a drug and alcohol counselor, and I'm gonna get that certificate in two years, and uh, I'm halfway through it already. And then um, I'm going to continue going to school because I want to be a licensed social worker. Tell me about your boys. They were well on the way to prison, for sure. Yeah. Um, 
in Roseburg before we got them up here. They were the cops were called on them all, every other day, at least punching windows out of the house they were staying in, fighting, um, just running the neighborhoods, and you know nobody was there watching them or. His oldest um, got expelled from school. No, it wasn't just a school expulsion. It was, it was statewide, statewide expulsion. No, no school in Oregon was supposed to take him again. Um, and so they made an agreement with us that if he went to Willamette Leadership Academy, they would let him back in school. He has a 3.7 grade average instead of a 2 point whatever it was. Um, he is active in our church. He does, um, he helps in kids church. Uh, with the smaller children and is super involved in that and he um, goes to therapy every day and he doesn't steal things from stores anymore. They mow lawns and stuff and make their own money on the side. Um, little jobs that they can do to help people. They vol He volunteers at our thrift store at our church. Um, they give back and they're like happy and healthy and when issues arise where um, we don't know what's going on or they're acting out like we sit down and can communicate with the children instead of them breaking windows out. I didn't think that my son was ever going to come back to live with us and a few months after we got our apartment uh, he came to live with us. And he's doing amazing, and his attitude is just um, changing every day. Um, he, that little boy that was full of respect and love, is back, and um, he has really good grades, and he's in football and basketball and track. And the youngest one, he um, played basketball this last season, and um, the, he just did amazing. Um, they like to exercise today, they don't um, worry about all the junk food that used to be like such a big part of our lives, you know, today it's healthy and balanced and, that was and probably, they enjoy it. That was probably the hardest habit to break with the kids <laughs> was the junk food. Was it every two weeks Carol comes by, the case manager? It um, used to be every week and now it's every two weeks and then it'll be every month. Yeah, she just drops by and... Like we do a budget and she gets a copy of it. Um, uh, they provide bus passes if we need one, like for the, the children, They're, they provide them with bus passes. They gave us um, a furniture voucher and we got, because we didn't have furniture. All we had was our clothes that was in our camp trailer or that we could fit in our car. Like I think the biggest support that they gave us was like, they showed us what to do to get on track, like, because I didn't know where to start, you know, like, you realize that you're homeless and that you've made these mistakes in the past and you don't really know, like, where to begin. And they, we do goal sheets, we do budgets, um, they give us information on how to save um, up for housing for when we're out of this program. We do financial literacy. We spent all our time using drugs and being criminals, and we didn't learn how to um, survive as citizens, like in a normal, like community. I go to personal therapy, and uh, to help myself learn how to parent um, clean and sober. And then me and Carol talk a lot. Uh, about like how the kids are doing and having a home to live in and like just the normal necessities and stuff that you don't even think about like the kids getting showered every day or being able to come home sit down at their own table and do homework stuff like that like it helps them just to have some balance in life and um, routine Hopefully in the two years we can be self-sufficient and pay the rent, whether it be here or having saved up enough deposit to move into a bigger home. You have a savings account that you're building? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's one of the requirements. You have to have a savings account. 
The kids and I were talking about our farmhouse that we're going to have one day. Farmhouse. We want chickens and goats. <laughs> uh, I'm super grateful for all the women at Family First. Um, because they, like Diana um, and her husband William from Family First, Really, um, she really imparted a lot of love into me and encouragement. Um, and like, they celebrate uh, the good things that we do. And when bad things happen, they like hold our hands and walk with us through it. And it really um, encouraged me to know that like, I can move out of my comfort zone and there's people that are going to help me to learn how to do that. I'm definitely grateful for Jesus. Um, grateful that Jesus never leaves me. <laughs> that's That's been a big thing. Um, I'm grateful for this community too and, and the ability to be able to give things back to it. It's crazy that like people are noticing and like we're able to help and give back to people um, on a level that I didn't think was going to be possible. Well, we're leaders at Celebrate Recovery, and um, like my pastor's wife the other day gave my number to this lady that um, is like new um, out of her addiction and uh, was like, you know, you should really talk to Krista and, um, you know, she's been through a lot and she can help you. We both lead 12-step study groups. Um, I do with women and um, him with the men and... I never thought I'd have a reputation where I could just recommend somebody to come to work and the boss would hire him. <laughs> That's what I meant. I, did. I just thought I was staying busy. Uh -huh. But apparently they they see such a thing. So you've been able to get other people into that your workplace? Yeah, yeah. one of the guys I sponsored from Celebrate Recovery, is, he just started today. Uh -huh. And I got another guy a job a few weeks, a couple months ago. A couple months ago, yeah. I believe that I got to give back in order to keep what God gave me. I have to give that to somebody. Yeah. Absolutely.